Okay. Um, the question is, which of the following best describes the primary cause of her hypotension? Okay, decreased cardiac output. So we're talking about the heart, increased blood rate volume, increased venous return, vasodilation, decreased systemic vascular system. Okay. Um, the case is a 45-year-old woman presents to the emergency department with severe abdominal pain and vomiting. She has a history of peptic ulcer disease. On examination, her heart rate is 120 beats per minute. Her blood pressure is 90 over 60, which means she's in shock. Um, and, or she could be in shock. And her skin is cool and clammy. She is disoriented and her capillary refill time is prolonged. Okay. Which of the following best describes her primary cause of hypertension? Okay. So cool and clammy tells me it is shock. Um, well, like her, firstly, her um, high heart rate and low blood pressure tells me it's shock. Cool and clammy. I forget exactly which one um, that tells you. But the fact that she's having severe abdominal pain and vomiting makes me think it's not. Um, so, okay. So firstly, I would just go through the answer. So it's a decreased cardiac output. I think your body tries to respond by um, increasing your blood pressure. And so I don't know if that's right. Um, so here, I don't know 100%, like just straight off the bat. Um, sure. So what's your so, gut say when you read it? Like, remember, let's go through your gut answer choice. We'll pick something first. Mm -hmm. um, I guess vasodilation. I don't know. Sure, that's okay. That's okay. Now let's work through it together here. I'll work with it together. So let, let's kind of um, work through one thing at a time. Okay, so um, we got a 45-year-old female, right? The reason why I highlighted emergency department is uh, I always think tell my students to think of it, is it acute or chronic an issue? So we can say this is acute issue, right? Because she's okay. at the emergency department um, because it changes what's your differential or kind of how you're thinking if it's a chronic issue. So this is acute. Um, she has a history of peptic ulcer disease. That's important, right? Because that yeah. can be the cause of why she's having abdominal pain and vomiting. Oh, yes. Okay. Yep. So remember, this is how I'm, I'm trying to walk you through how I think about it, right? Um, and then her heart rate is 120 beats per minute, right? She's tachycardic, um, which in my mind is not good. That means that um, a couple of things can cause ta tachycardia, right? Um, especially loss of blood or dehydration, right? Yes. Or some of the things, or even when you're septic too. So in your mind, you're thinking out uh, what kind of shocks is she having? Like, I think you hit it on the nail by saying she's in shock, but what kind of shock is important, right? Blood pressure is 90 over 60 and her skin is cool and clammy. So if you remember, if she's in septic shock, is she going to be hot or is she going to be cool? I think she's going to be hot if she's in septic shock. Exactly. So in my mind, I'm like, okay, she's not in septic shock, right? So likely with peptic ulcer disease, not what are some septic. of the complications that you can have from peptic ulcer disease? You Acute. can have ulcers that end up causing bleeding and she's probably Maybe. bleeding in the stomach and having a buildup of, of blood in the stomach causing pain. There we go. So she's, she's losing blood fast, right? In my mind, she's like, oh shoot, she's bleeding, right? Because like you said, peptic ulcer disease can cause really bad hemorrhage, right? The duodenal no ulcer is near there, uh, duodenal artery is near there. So that's not good, right? So in my mind, I'm like, oh, she's really, really sick, right? So, and of course, clinically, they say that she's disoriented or capillary refill time is prolonged, which fits with cool and clammy, right? Because she's not having enough blood in her periphery, right? And so, so now, now I'm, I'm thinking decreased systemic vascular resistance. Okay, so let's talk about this. You pick B, okay, which is good to start thinking about that. But what happens, I'm going to give you another scenario here. Let's say you ran a marathon, right? And you're dehydrated as crap, right? Um, do you, How does your body compensate with decreased amount of fluids? Does it increase um, the constriction of its arterioles or does it decrease? I'd imagine that actually it would increase the constriction of bingo, blood. bingo, right? So if you're losing blood, which is kind of the same kind of hypovolemic shock, right? Do you think your body is going to just dilate or is it going to constrict? It would dilate. I'm sorry, it constrict, constrict. Yeah, it would constrict, right? To try to maintain your blood pressure, right? So do you think that increases or decreases the systemic vascular resistance? It would increase the systemic vascular resistance. Okay. So do you want to stick with B? No, or? it would not be that. I was thinking that because of less blood in the in the capillary, literally, it would lead to, I thought, um, less resistance, but that makes more sense. Yeah. So, um, so I think it's a great thing, topic that you brought up because it's a big misconception, right? So remember, um, having blood volume, okay, I'm going to, you know, because it's hard to write here in my, my handwriting, 
atrocious. So I'm going <laughs> to abbreviate it as BV, as blood volume, right? Not bacterial vaginosis. It's completely different, right? <laughs> so this is blood volume. So a decrease in blood volume does not mean a decrease in systemic vascular resistance. Systemic vascular resistance, as a um, physiological term, talks about the constriction of the arterial side, right? Okay. So just, just because you have decreased blood volume, right? Remember, your body is going to respond and try to maintain your blood pressure by constricting. So automatically, this should be increased. Does it make sense? Yes. Okay. So which one do you want to go with? I would go with A now because it couldn't, I don't think it could be increased blood volume because you're losing blood. And then increased venous return would mean that you are also, oh, I would still go with A. Because okay, good. So I'm going to, I'm going to talk you through this. So I, I know that in your mind, you're, you're running different formulas or different concepts at the same time. So I'm going to keep it real simple for you. Okay. So okay. remember cardiac output is equal to what What's the formula here? Heart rate times stroke volume. Heart rate times stroke volume. Okay. When you have hypovolemic shock, what's going to happen to your stroke volume? It um, decreases. Yeah. Significantly. Right. If you're losing blood, you don't have enough blood. And so your heart can't pump it out. Right. My question here to, to make the aha moment and connect all the dots for you. Can your body ever with any system reach homeostasis again when you have pathology? Does I, that make sense, the question I'm trying to say? So for instance, right, can your can your body compensate hard enough to get back to normal when you have an issue? I don't think so. Yeah, it never reaches back to normal, which is why you need to fix the problem, right? Because think about this. If you have decreased stroke volume, if you could compensate by increasing your heart rate a million times to get back to cardiac output, that's you normal. You would always do that. Yeah, then you would always do that. You wouldn't need to do anything for a patient, right? But remember, you can never compensate back to normal. So even though you increased your heart rate, your cardiac output is still going to be decreased compared to normal. Does that's why that's the correct answer in this case. Yep. Makes sense. Yes. All right. Let's see. Okay. Perfect. Does that perfect. make sense how we work through that? That Yes. That makes exactly so perfect sense. Yeah. Um, so so okay. I want you to kind of, when you're looking at these, right, I think you're, you're, I think you're working towards the right thing. You're very close when you're working through this question with me. Um, remember, just add in a little bit more of the clinical aspect, and then you start adding a little bit more of the physio to it. But you want to keep it as, a, I always try, as simple as possible. The more convoluted you get and you start putting different theories against each other, it's going to become very confusing. I think that's a big problem that I have. I kind of just bounce from topic to topic, trying to like become like the most insanely smart person in the yes. world. And yeah. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. And, and I can tell you, uh, I can tell you, I'm not that smart of a person, which is why I try to keep things as simple as possible. So the more, just, simple, yeah, on the same way. <laughs> yeah, the more simple that you keep it, right? The, the, what I'm trying to say is when, when you're picking an answer, it should be a very direct answer, if that makes sense, right? If you're, the, usually what I say about logic is if you're jumping, like, you know, I always say if you're jumping one, two, three, or four jumps in logic, that probably the answer is incorrect. They're only testing you about one to two jumps in logic. Okay. 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 If you if you're like you said, if you're like, oh man, I'm beating, you know, I beat this test. I'm outsmarting the test. Your answer is probably incorrect. <laughs> okay, I, that's actually hilarious because I literally told somebody like, I I know they're trying to trick me here, and they're like, that's not the right answer. Yeah, yeah. yeah. They, this test I always say is already difficult enough, so there's no reason for them to try to trick you per se, right? It's usually, you know, it's usually us as, you know, medical students uh, or even residents as we take our in-service. Um, if you think that, you know, you're outsmarting a test, you're just overthinking. 